Hello and welcome to Ubuntu Basics, Episode 3. In this lesson we're going to talk about using the command line for some actually useful stuff, especially bash scripting and using the grep command which allows you to search through the results of a previously run command. Now in this particular case I'm just going to show you a very simple uh, command which is going to be extremely useful to you in pretty much most engagements that you would go on or even just diagnosing your own system. So let's take a look at PS. Typing PS and hitting enter shows me the commands running in the current terminal. Now while this isn't very useful here, it might be in case you're running things in the background. It shows you the process identifier which can be used to kill the process. It shows you which command line it's running in and the name of the command. However, what happens if we want to see all the processes that are running on the system? Well, we can simply type PS dash capital A, it's got to be a capital, and hit enter, and you can see this extremely long list of commands and processes which are running. Well, what happens if we want to know whether nano is running? Well, we could go PS, PS dash A, and scroll through the whole list. In our case, it's right here, but if it was, say, GVFSD, and we needed to know if it was running, it would be kind of annoying to look through this entire list just to find it, right? So what we want to do is we want to type PS dash A, then the pipe symbol, which is on your keyboard directly above the enter key, it's shift and the backslash key, that's shift backslash, and grep. Remember there's a space between the commands and the pipe. So PS dash A, pipe it through, grep, and nano. Now what this will do is it will take the output from the command PS and send it to the command grep and display that to us. Grep takes an argument of a regular expression. In this case, it's just a literal string, but you can actually have wildcards in there, you know, star and whatever. Grep takes one argument, which is the what we want to search for, and it will take others as well. For example, how long the line length or whether we want lines before or after. But in this simple usage, it will simply show us the line that that appears on. So hitting enter here, you can see it just showed us this same line but it cut out all the rest of the command so that we don't have to scroll through that whole list. Let's take a look at something else useful. Shell scripting. So typing ls you can see that I've added the scripts directory. I'm going to cd scripts oh, oh pfft. scripts not scripts type ls there we go so I have a shell script in this directory already. Now in the other window I'm going to open it up hello.sh, and you can see this is the entire script. All it does is defines the program that's meant to run it, which is slash bin slash bash. So the way that this works is the hashtag symbol here, or pound symbol, identifies this line as a comment, meaning it won't be executed by the script. The exclamation point identifies it as the line telling the shell what program to use to execute it, and slash bin slash bash is the path to the bash shell, which is what we want to execute the program. The next line begins the program with the command echo, which all this means is it's exactly as if you had typed echo into the command line when you run this. So echo, quote, hello world, exclamation point, end quote. And what this means is that when we run it, it should echo hello world to the command line. So let's try that. Hit control O, enter, and What you'll need to do is type chmod plus x hello.sh. Now what this does, chmod allows you to change the properties of the file because by default most files aren't executable. You're not allowed to run them. This is a security feature and it's very useful. So what we're doing is we're saying chmod change some properties of the file plus x which means add the executable bit which means let us execute this file and then the name of the file. So we'll hit enter, and it's done. If we type ls, we can see hello.sh is green, which means it's executable. So now over here, I'm, there's no reason to do it in two command windows. I just have them open, so I'm showing you. You can transfer between them, and, and nothing weird happens. We can simply type dot slash, which means run things in the current directory, hello.sh, and boom. It executes perfectly and says hello world, which is exactly what we intended it to do. Now, obviously, scripts can get a lot more complicated than this. 
Um, the Bash scripting language is in fact Turing complete, meaning that it has mathematics and logic built in. So if statements and loops are fully allowed. Okay, so now let's combine what we know into creating a simple quote unquote malicious script. We're not actually having gonna have it do anything bad. It's just gonna run a loop, wait a second, run a loop again, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we're going to take a look at killing a malicious script that is running. So in this command window here, in this command window here, I'm gonna type nano mal.sh to create a new file called mal.sh. Now notice this doesn't actually create the file. The file isn't created on the disk until we save it, but this just gives it a name so that uh, when we save it we don't have to type the name in. It's your preference whether you want to do it this way or just type in the name when you're done. So since this is a shell script we're going to type hashtag exclamation point. So this is a comment, it won't be executed, and this is the line that defines what program will run this, then slash bin slash bash, so it will be run by the bash shell. Then we're going to white space down a couple lines, hashtag a malicious script, and actually I'm going to put this in quotes, it's not malicious at all, it just runs a loop, a malicious script. So our next line is going to be while, which is the command or bash line that starts a new while loop. So the while loop runs as long as the condition contained in the two brackets is true. And in this case, we're going to set it to one, so it will always be true. Then we're going to hit enter and type sleep 1s. So it's going to sleep for one second and type I'm sorry, you have to have while, so like this, while, one, do. So what is in between do and done is what will be executed. So while one is true, which it will always be, so forever, do sleep for one second. But that's not good enough for me, so I'm going to have echo evil things. There we go. So, yeah. Let's hit Control O to save. Uh, that's Control O, enter, and then Control X to exit out. Hit LS, there you go, there it is. So, chmod plus X mal.sh. We have an executable script now. So, we'll type dot slash mal.sh. I screwed up. Why? The student among you will notice that I forgot to put a space between the brackets and the one. You have to do that. So I'm gonna go back up through my command history with the up key until I get nano mal.sh, hit enter, and I'm actually going to replace this one with the more proper form true, which is a command which will always return true. Control O, enter, control X. Now this is the nice thing about shell scripts, there's no compiling, there's no ridiculousness when you want to test something, just type it into a script, try to run the script, if it doesn't run, it'll tell you why. You know, in this case, command not found. Okay, fine. And so let's try that again. Dot slash mal dot sh. And there we go. Every one second, it's going to print evil things. So let's look over here and type ps dash a. We can see it here, but let's say that it was something that was hidden, you know, way up in here, you know, Getty or... or KRF commed was infected with something and we had to uh, end the process real fast before it did any damage. We'd go ps-a pipe through, remember that's the pipe symbol, grep mal.sh, or actually we could just go mal. And there we go. We've got mal.sh in this, in PTS12, which is this terminal over here, I just happen to know, and here is our PID, 3298. We can type kill and the and hit enter and we can see what this is as kill. The usage of kill is kill and if you want to send a particular signal you can put it in there but because there are brackets around it that means it's optional. And the PID or the job spec, which we don't have the job spec because it's not part of a job, so we're just going to enter the PID. So we'll type 
kill and the PID from up here, which is 329 or 8. 3298. And hit enter. And you can see over here, the process tells us it was terminated. This is a function of the shell, not of my script. The process tells us it was terminated and we're kicked back to a prompt. And now if we type PS, or just scroll back up rather, to this command to find it, it's not there. It's gone. There's nothing for grep to display, so it doesn't display anything. So there you go. That's how to kill malicious scripts, how to write your own scripts, very basic ones. And I'll be back to show you some more features of the scripting system and of Bash in general.